triggers. What is a trigger? A trigger is a coded reaction to a database event. An event causes the execution of a trigger, which can be specified within the trigger. Triggers can be used for referential integrity. It's not recommended. It's better to use constraints. It's much, much faster to use constraints. They can be used to log events, for instance, database events. There is a whole section in Oracle on auditing, which is really database administration, but auditing is much more efficient than using triggers for event logging. Quite simply put, triggers are really rules. Rules have been used in some relational databases in the past to create expert systems. Expert systems react to certain database events or states in order to assess various paths of execution. Triggers can be used for something like that. They can be used for referential integrity and event logging. Quite often, triggers will be used in applications where most of the people working in the applications are more programming oriented, and they know much more about writing PLSQL code as opposed to constructing constraints for referential integrity and setting up Oracle auditing. Triggers do have their uses. The create trigger syntax. Once again, create or replace. Replaces a new procedure or simply creates if it doesn't exist. Trigger is executed and defined as being before, after, or instead of. As we can see from the callout, a before trigger is executed before an event occurs. Even though, for instance, we say insert a record, the insert command has begun to execute, but it won't make any changes until the trigger has been executed because the trigger is specified as to be executed before an insert event is actually performed. After is the opposite way around. It occurs, for instance, after an insert statement is performed. Instead of applies only to views and is really an instead of reaction as opposed to, for instance, inserting into something. The trigger tells it not to insert, but to go and do something else. The something else is contained within the PLSQL code of the trigger. A trigger can be before or after or instead of and can be a combination of detection of insert, update, and delete events. In other words, you can say insert, or you can say insert or update, or you can say delete, etc., etc. Any combination of those three. A trigger has a special piece of syntax called referencing, which allows you to change the way that old and new values are represented. This is not really necessary to use, but within a trigger, as in within expert systems built by relational database rules, you can generally reference a value in a column as two values, as the value before it's been changed and the value after it's been changed. So you would reference that value as old.column name or new.column name. For each row implies a trigger is executed for each row for which it is executed. The when condition actually applies a trigger firing SQL filtering condition. What it means is that if you execute an insert statement and it causes a trigger to fire, if the insert statement, in terms of whatever it's changing, fails the when condition, the trigger will simply abort and carry on and do the insert statement without executing any PLSQL code within the trigger, that is. Alter trigger syntax. A trigger can be enabled or disabled. It can actually be renamed, and it can be compiled. Enabling and disabling are interesting. You can create, compile, and store a trigger in the database, and you can actually either permanently or temporarily disable it. Obviously, if you want to enable it again, you'd execute alter trigger enable. And we've already seen compile. The drop trigger command is very simple. You simply type drop trigger trigger name. Now I want to demonstrate how triggers work, or not necessarily how they work, but the effect they have. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a table called events where I'm going to store things based on things that happen in the database. Database events will fire a trigger on this table which will cause an insertion into the event table. Quite simple. 
So I'm going to create or replace a trigger called category, which says after insert or update of name parent ID or delete on category for each row, go and run this command. It means that whenever I insert a record into category or I update a record in category, changing the name or the parent ID, we don't want to change the primary key, or we delete a row in the category table, this trigger will be executed and it will insert this row into the events table. One very important thing to remember about triggers. You cannot include commit or rollback transactional control commands in triggers. Why? Because a trigger is not supposed to end a transaction because it is triggered by part of another transaction. You can't have six insert statements within a single transaction and then commit within the trigger and expect to be able to roll back at the end of those six transactions. Take, for instance, these two transactions. This is insert into category, update category, and delete from category. They will all execute the trigger. And I don't have a commit command anywhere here, which means I don't want to store it. What it means is that these three commands are all a single transaction. If there was a commit command in here, it would simply nullify this whole transaction, because this delete could be dependent on this insert, which in fact it actually is. Therefore, I wouldn't want to commit until the end of it. Commit and rollback inside the triggers are not allowed for a very good reason, and that's the reason. So, that can cause other problems, because triggers can fire other triggers. What would happen if this happened to be an insert into the category table? So, this insert would fire this trigger. It would execute an insert in the category table, if this was a category table insert, which would in turn fire the same trigger again itself, so it would recurse infinitely into this trigger.